We have not come as big people. We have come to serve in the streets. Yesterday I was out in doing street ministry. I had the privilege to play Jesus in one of our dramas. And we led people to salvation in the street corners here of Nakuru. And um, we have come with a big team, as you know. We are 160 international evangelists. And then we are cooperating with hundreds and hundreds, probably up to over 2,000 uh, local evangelists and workers in this amazing event, uh, cooperating with 400 plus churches in Nakuru, bringing Jesus to this wonderful city. So we started with a business seminar in town because we want to help poor people get into business. And then we had an interfaith dinner where we actually invited the imams, the Hindu leaders, uh, the Catholics, the, even the Rastafarians came. And we had all of these beautiful people gathered together where we honored them, loved on them, and blessed all the fathers and mamas of the cities of different faith and told them we, are not, we have not come for a church conference. Nakuro has had too many church conferences. It's time to meet for a festival. And I heard some of you say, when is the crusade starting? We don't like the word crusade. Crusade is, is a bad word. It has a lot of baggage. Because that was Christians going in and killing Muslims back in the days. No, this is not a crusade. This is a festival of joy and peace. This is a festival focusing in on what Jesus is all about giving a second chance, giving a new start to people. All right, we came with a big SOS Kids team. So parallel, there is an, a, a festival for kids. We also came with SOS Aid, which is one of our sub organizations that are handing out hygiene kits for schoolgirls. You know, it can be very hard to be a schoolgirl when you have your period. You have to stay home, but we have come with some wonderful teachings and some hygiene kits. And we also minister in the prisons when we are here. And as a matter of fact, I think we have come to boost the economy in Nakuru in an amazing way. We're actually spending 30 million Kenya shillings while we are in town. Probably much, much more if you count in the advertisement and and what it costs to just have the stage up. Just to give you a, a hint, what just the, the equipment that we have here costs about $40,000 to run a night, a night. So we have not come here to collect offerings. You will see in the evenings, will not be one offering. We have supporters and our churches that have paid for all this. So we are just coming to spend on the gospel in Nakuru. Because the gospel is free. Amen. We have not come to sell our own teaching or sign our books. We have not come to sell some special anointed oil or handkerchiefs or anything of that kind. We are here to promote one man, Jesus Christ. Amen. And as I've been in Africa for 30 years, I know that you have met with a lot of Buana Kubwas that come in with the sirens and we are, we are none of that kind. We will dance with the street boys and the street girls, and we will wipe tears and wipe vomit if we have to, and love on the city as much as we can while we are here. Most of our leadership team are first generation believers. Fior over here was a drug dealer. And uh, Fernando, who is leading the team, he was good at stealing cars and, you know, and I was a street boy myself. and. And we have just come because we love Jesus so much and we think the gospel is too big and too awesome to stay inside of the church walls. So we are priests for those that don't go to church, right? And, and there's a lot to be said. But I had something in my spirit that I wanted to, to share with you today. First, I want to say a big thank you to the bishops and the pastors for receiving us the way you have received us. I really want to express that through the media houses too. We have been amazed by the hospitality. You have washed our feet and we want to wash your feet. 
And we're not coming to do something new. We are building on every pastor and their sweat and their tears and their blood. We are coming to build on their foundation and we are coming to build the house of God in Nakuru. Hallelujah. And uh, hopefully we leave the city in a better place. Hallelujah. So there's something I have in my spirit that I'd like to share with you. Psalm 113 from verse 5 tells us, Who is like our God who sits so high, but then he stoops down so low, and he takes the poor and the needy off the ash heap and out of the dust, and he seats them with the princes of their people. This is the gospel. When we preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, a street boy can become a gentleman. A prostitute can become a virgin again. Hallelujah. When we preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, there is hope and initiative and creativity and innovation that comes up in people's hearts. And for over 30 years, I've seen how this has worked. I come to town, we preach the gospel, and then I come back five years later, and there's a young man inviting me to, to have some tilapia and ugali with him, and he's telling me about how his business has come up. He was a drunkard, but now he has a business in town. This is what the gospel does. The gospel lifts people. The gospel lifts each and every one. Psalm 23 says that you have prepared a table before me in the presence of my enemies. And we believe that the young generation of Nakuru and everyone in Nakuru, they will come to a prepared table when they come into this field where the Lord is waiting on them. Hallelujah. Where the cup will overflow, where their heads will be anointed. We believe there's going to be a wonderful presence of Jesus in this field. In every festival we go, we see what Jesus saw. He heals the sick, he casts out demons, and he restores lives. And he's going to lift people. I also had a scripture from the Psalms. I think it's Psalm 86, verse 12, no, 17. Psalm 86, 17, where it says, the psalmist is praying, Make with me a sign of your goodness that my enemies will see it and be put to shame. And I believe there will be people walking in here that have been judged by the religious community. They have had three broken marriages. They have had a business that have gone bankrupt and they are in shame and guilt and condemnation. But when they walk in here on this field, God is going to shower them with his goodness and his grace. And there will be a new beginning for so many people. Make with me a sign of your goodness so that my enemies will see it and be put to shame. And I also want to prophesy over everyone that is behind a camera or a microphone today. Listen, I know you have met with a lot of bad representatives of church and Christianity. This is something we are battling in East Africa. Now I consider myself an East African. You have met with judgmental, narrow-minded, hypocritical representatives of Jesus. Please forgive them. Please forgive them for Jesus' sake. Jesus was the friend of tax collectors. He was the friend of prostitutes. And Jesus said, it is not the healthy that needs the doctor, but the sick. I've not come to call the righteous, but the sinners. And this field is going to be a table set for town. A table set for all of those that feel they don't fit. Okay? A table set for everyone. As a matter of fact, everywhere we go, there's such a festive atmosphere, such a vibe of joy that the Muslims and the Hindus dance together with the Christians. And all of a sudden the gospel is preached. And you will see we preach the gospel a little differently. Very illustrative. Uh, uh, we use a lot of theater. We lose, use a lot of film clips and a lot of stuff so that it's very easy, approachable for everyone. So this is, of course, for the lawyers and the doctors and the teachers and the carpenters and the electricians. But it's also for the border driver and the shoe polisher. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. It is for each and every one. So we are so excited to finally be in Nakuru. 
And we believe that Jesus is going to pour out his spirit and he's going to be made great. And with those words, and now I see some of you have even got your team t-shirts on. When you are walking out of here, we are one team. And I hope that you feel today that this is something you can get behind. I know I see it in your faces. I see it in your eyes that you feel, okay, this is not what I'm used to. Uh, this is not what, this is not nothing like the crusades I've been to. And I, I can promise you this. Even me, the preacher here, I will be in the crowd dancing with the people and all of a sudden I will be preaching up there. We have no bodyguards. I have a wife that is looking after my body. All right. <laughs> and uh, we are simple down to earth people. So get your team t-shirt on and feel that you are part of our team. And let's do something good together for the people of Nakuru. Amen. And I believe we can pack this field out with hungry Nakurians. Hallelujah. Coming in to meet with the living Savior, Jesus Christ, and be touched by him. So, with all this said, I officially want to kick off and open up the festival, the Explosion of Joy Festival Amen. 2024 in Nakuru. Biga bigele gele. Wabwana Yesu. Wana wake wa Kenya biga bigele gele. Wana uge wa Kenya biga bigele gele. Come on. This is our time to dance together, to have fun together, and see Jesus Christ move in mighty ways. Amen.